O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. From the time they were born, Maria tucked her children in safely every night as she said prayers. She would also say prayers over them as they slept. In the morning, her children would find her in the lazy boy recliner in the living room in her house robes and slippers, with her Bible in her arms. She was praying, praying for the world, but specifically praying for her children and family. She prayed when they were babies. She prayed over them when they were in grade school. She prayed even more when they became teenagers. When her daughter Chloe was about to go off to college, she was anxious, anxious about how much her life would change, anxious about new expectations, new challenges, and being alone in a faraway place. But Chloe knew that her mother prayed for her. That evening, as she was about to go to bed, she asked her mother, Mom, can you pray the prayers you always pray for me when I'm asleep? But can you pray them out loud so I can hear them? So Maria prayed, God, I love you. I worship you. I adore you. I bid you come and surround Chloe with your love and protection. Send angels to take charge over her. Grant her peace and safety this night and watch over her as she sleeps. And as she goes back to school, keep her safe. In Jesus' name, amen. What a joy and comfort to know someone is praying for you. To know someone loves you enough to remember you and intercede on your behalf for your health, for your relationships, and your spiritual life. I can only imagine how loved the disciples felt in our gospel today when they heard Jesus praying for them, praying so that the disciples could overhear Jesus praying for them. Our gospel says Jesus prayed for his disciples and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. We are never alone. That's the good news. God is with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, every step of the way, through every heartache and headache, in every emotion we have, from anger to anxiety to anguish, in our peace and in our pain, in our prosperity and in our poverty, in our tears, and in our terrible tragedy we experience. God is with us. And I know one thing for sure, one thing for certain. When we pray, it changes things. It changes us, it changes our relationship with others, and it changes the world. And today we learn that Jesus is also praying with us and for us, sending his prayers over us. Jesus prays for us, for me, for you, for the families who are grieving, for those who are filled with hate, and we should too. But after we have grieved, we should also decide how we want to act and respond. What we are going to do to help protect the innocent ones, the people of color just shopping for food, the children and teachers just going to school. I have seen so many memes on the internet where people criticize the poor response of public officials who say, our hearts go out to our families and we're praying for you, but who offer nothing else. We are never to use the gospel um, as an excuse. We're never to say we're praying for you as an excuse to not do what we're called to do as Christians. If your child is hungry, do you offer him a rock? No. If your child is vulnerable, do you offer him a snake? Of course not. We are praying for you is never supposed to be an excuse to get us off the hook for loving our neighbor. We're supposed to care for our neighbor. We're supposed to help protect the vulnerable. So when we're done 
praying and grieving and being outraged, what are we going to do about it? How will we love our vulnerable neighbors of color and keep them safe? How will we protect our children and teachers? I think we start with prayer and see where God leads our hearts and our minds, where God stirs our spirits to respond. In the Revelation to John, we hear, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. God was with us as the world began. God is with us now, and God will be with us always. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with his testimony for the churches, to encourage the churches that I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty and hungry for peace and righteousness and justice we say, come, Lord Jesus, come to us now. Help us to pray and help us to act in accordance with your will. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts, come into our homes, come into our cities and our nation and the world. Help us to see the way you would have us to go. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. May you be a new creation, Christ for those to whom Christ shall send you. And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you always. Amen. And God bless you.